Good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for joining us in this very first TechML Technical Forum Asia. Uh, my name is Wei Xiao. I'm from ARM Machine Learning Ecosystem. It's my huge pleasure to be on the Technical uh, Program Committee of TechML Asia. So our next speaker is Kao Chi. So Kao Chi, could you please start your presentation? So Kyochi Nakamura graduated from the Information Science and Technology Graduate School of the University of Tokyo. His main research topic was the theory of optimizing compilers for massively com uh, parallel computers. In 2015, he left the graduate school and founded Eden. So his topic today is acceleration of deep learning inference on Raspberry Pi's video core GPU. So Koichi, please start with your presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So I will talk about Raspberry Pi's uh, acceleration and uh, I will skip uh, this slide because uh, we did. <laughs> Uh, introduced me. So uh, uh, I was selected as an ARM innovator because of this uh, topic, uh, acceleration of deep learning inference on uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a brief summary of my company, uh, Eden. Uh, Eden is a startup company uh, located in Tokyo. And uh, uh, we are uh, uh, developing and uh, providing uh, HAI platform service uh, with uh, acceleration of deep learning on the edge and also uh, the remote uh, management of uh, edge devices like uh, firmware update, OT update, and uh, uh, changing configuration of devices and application remotely and uh, marketplace for uh, AI applications and IoT applications and so on. So, uh, so uh, again, uh, today I will uh, talk about uh, uh, deep learning on uh, Raspberry Pi. I'm mostly uh, focusing on inference of deep learning models on Raspberry Pi. And uh, uh, why are we uh, doing, uh, working on Raspberry Pi is because uh, Raspberry Pi has a big system in terms of uh, users and uh, many uh, companies, uh, software ecosystem and hardware system, sensors, uh, cameras, uh, housing, and so on. And it's very easy to use. So uh, there are lots of uh, documents on the web and uh, books and the tutorials and the schools. So it's very easy and uh, it's versatile. So uh, Raspberry Pi is not designed to for specific purpose like AI. So it's very versatile and the low price. And recently uh, Raspberry Pi, the industry use of Raspberry Pi is uh, growing. Uh, uh, roughly 60% uh, 60, 60 of uh, shipment of Raspberry Pi is used for industrial purposes uh, like uh, digital signage and uh, uh, IoT devices and so on. So, uh, so, uh, so actually uh, Raspberry Pi is not so much uh, tiny in, in comparison to Cortex M devices, uh, but uh, 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 it's very, uh, good uh, candidate for doing a business uh, in I IoT uh, area field. So, uh, and, uh, so because of that, uh, we uh, started uh, research of development uh, on Raspberry Pi. Uh, firstly, we will I will show you a demo, the videos. So uh, this is uh, running uh, ImageNet uh, classification uh, on Pi Zero. Here it is, here it is, can you see my? So uh, we run uh, 1,000 class image, ImageNet uh, recognition uh, using Mobile V2 uh, 1.0 uh, with resolution uh, 224 by 200 paper. And the important part is that uh, we are using a floating point 32 bit full precision. So uh, we do not use any quantization uh, and pruning. So it's a full precision model. And we are able to run uh, ImageNet uh, more than, sorry, more than 80 FPS on Pi Zero, uh, just five the device. And uh, uh, this is uh, another demo. Uh, so uh, running uh, SSD, the object detection, uh, more than uh, 12 FPS on Pi Three. 
and uh, uh, the pose estimation uh, using a pose proposal net. It's, it is uh, like uh, open pose, but uh, a more uh, faster uh, model uh, developed by a Japanese uh, researcher. And uh, uh, it's uh, roughly a 10 FPS on Pi 3. And uh, actually, this is a uh, faster than uh, open pose on Jetson Nano. So, uh, and it's a very uh, accuracy is uh, very practical. Okay. And uh, semantic segmentation, more than 5 FPS on Pi 3. Uh, in this case, uh, we are recognizing a people pattern in the left mask. We are using deep lab V3 uh, with mobile and VT backbone. Also full precision, so floating point study to be. And uh, this is amazing demo, uh, running image captioning. So uh, you see now uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, says uh, here is a laptop computer sitting on top of the desk. The computer motor sitting on the desk, something like that. Uh, yeah, this part is interesting. A uh, bed with a uh, white comforter. So uh, it's a wooden headboard. So now uh, Raspberry Pi is recognizing this wooden headboard and the white uh, comfort. So uh, we are using a uh, mobile VT encoder across uh, LSTM decoder. Uh, we are also using a uh, floating point started to be full precision model and uh, more than uh, 2.5 FPS on uh, Pi 3. And this is the last uh, demo, uh, sound. Sound recognition. Uh, maybe no, no voices, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, so uh, as you know, this demo is recognizing uh, the, the dark. Dark is and uh, a baby, sorry, a crying baby, and so on. So uh, we are using uh, also a Aristin based uh, sound uh, recognition model. And here is uh, more another demo videos, uh, lots of videos. So please see, uh, please visit our YouTube channel. Uh, youtube.com uh, slash idain inc <clears throat> okay so uh so uh this is a brief uh, feature of our demo so uh, we are using a built-in gpu of raspberry pi uh, called uh, video core 4 and video core 6 uh developed by uh, broadcom so uh, we are using no other accelerators and no servers so just a single raspberry pi board Pi zero, Pi three, Pi four, and so on. And, uh, and also this is important. Uh, we do not use no, we do not use model compression techniques such as uh, quantization and pruning. So, and also distillation. So there's no, completely no accuracy at all. So uh, the, the model training, uh, the model uh, in training phase and the inference phase is a mathematically equivalent. So completely no accuracy at all. And because, uh, and uh, uh, it's portable between the devices. So uh, our model can run on Pi 3, uh, Raspberry Pi, and also uh, Intel, NVIDIA, because uh, so there are no quantization, so no need of specific hardware, so it's portable. <coughs> so uh, why, so I think uh, the, the quantization and the pruning is very important uh, in for tiny ML, uh, but uh, uh, why we do not uh, use uh, model compression is uh, that, uh, that we put on most the highest uh, highest priority on easy to use. So easy, e easiness is very uh, important. User experience is very important for doing uh, this kind of business. So uh, so uh, so we have been doing uh, lots of uh, R and D uh, how to uh, avoid uh, model compression uh, techniques. And this is benchmark. Uh, uh, in case of uh, ImageNet, uh, 1000 cross image recognition. And uh, our Pi Zero version is uh, roughly 49 times faster than TensorFlow on Pi, Pi Zero. 
And in case of pi three, it's left, it, it's uh, six times uh, faster uh, with same accuracy. So uh, it's better. So there's no uh, sacrification of accuracy. So same accuracy and uh, 49 times faster. And uh, this is uh, uh, the brief uh, summary of <coughs> benchmarks. So uh, this is uh, the brief uh, summary of uh, benchmarks. So uh, please look at uh, uh, details uh, later uh, in the slide. But uh, we achieved uh, more than 10 FPS uh, or close to 10 FPS on Pi3 uh, for classification and detection and pose estimation. So very basic, uh, important tasks for analyzing uh, people's behavior. <clears throat> so uh, this is uh, the uh, performance of uh, video code four and the video code uh, six. Uh, until Pi3, uh, the SOC equips a video code four GPU. And uh, its uh, peak performance is 28.8 uh, gigaflops. Not quite fast. Actually, uh, in case of Pi 3, a CPU is faster. But uh, uh, the, the, the combination is uh, more than uh, 60 uh, gigaflops. So it's quite good. And uh, uh, in case of Pi uh, 4, from Pi 4, uh, the, the, they are using a new version of uh, video, call, video call 6. Uh, it has uh, 32 gigaflops and, and CPU is 48. So CPU is faster, uh, but uh, it's compatib uh, comparable. So the CPU plus DPU is more than 80, 80 gigaflops. So it's very nice uh, for uh, this kind of very cheap uh, device. And uh, uh, how to use uh, video call? Actually, uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, there is no software tools to use uh, the video core. Uh, so uh, we have developed uh, software tools from scratch uh, by reading uh, architecture reference guide uh, uh, for video core 4. And uh, it's, it's open sourced. Uh, please visit uh, this uh, GitHub repository. Actually, this is my personal uh, repository. Uh, and uh, uh, there is uh, the tools and uh, examples. And uh, uh, actually, there is no reference, no, there is no uh, document about VC6. So uh, actually, we uh, we did a reverse engineering of uh, video card six, uh, of, of course by permission of a Raspberry Pi Foundation, and we have uh, built a software tools. So uh, so we uh, we send a random random instruction bits to the video card six and uh, and lead the result. So <laughs> and uh, repeat. So uh, doing a uh, entire reverse engineering of uh, this chip and uh, and make this uh, tools. And uh, this uh, Pi video core and Pi video core six is uh, just assembler tools. So writing most primitive code. And uh, uh, and we uh, re recently released uh, QMKL, uh, which is a mass kernel library uh, compatible with uh, Blast and uh, Intel MKL, uh, running on the Raspberry Pi GPU. It's also open sourced. And uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, the, uh, the deep learning uh, software stack is not fully open source, and, and we will do. But uh, today, for today, it's not open. Uh, and this is an example of the code. So actually, uh, it's, it is uh, uh, written in as an embedded DSL for Python program languages. So it's assembler languages. But you can uh, write this kind of code. And uh, uh, sorry, it's almost no time. So, and uh, and, uh, uh, and and we we built uh, entire software stack uh, from on top of this assembler. So uh, our compiler takes Onyx or NNX as an input and uh, uh, doing a graph optimization of the Onyx model and uh, uh, and the other optimization I will explain later and uh, uh, generate uh, the C code C program for a various. Uh, uh, chip CPU and the VC4, VC6, and the mobile GPUs. And this is brief architecture of video core 4. So uh, the video core 4 uh, has uh, 12, 12 QPUs, and uh, each, each QPU has four uh, SIMD core. And, uh, and uh, ah, sorry, sorry, uh, 12, G, 12 QPU, and, uh, and uh, each QPU is uh, six, 16 way SIMD core. So uh, the, it's 
the multiplied equation is roughly uh, 20, 92 uh, power reason. And, uh, uh, and if it's a, if floating point started to beat accumulation and the multiplication dual issue and a special accumulation. So it's very old fashioned uh, assembly architecture and, uh, uh, and very low uh, uh, memory bandwidth. So it is uh, the most important uh, point. Uh, how to uh, maximize the utilization of memory bandwidth is most important. So uh, I will skip these slides. So it's hard to read at the page. Sorry. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and we did uh, R1D of a compiler. So, uh, so, we, so our compiler uh, generates a C code uh, doing this kind of uh, optimizations, algorithm selection, tensor layer selection, and the classic uh, loop optimization and layer masking, tensor level, uh, layer level scheduling and other. So uh, for algorithm selection, uh, the most important operation of deep learning is convolution. And uh, for, for single convolution, there's lots of infinite number of implementations, dialect, IM2 call, and the Winograd, FFT, and each algorithm has uh, many varieties. And uh, 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 there is a trade-off between the number of operations and the memory utilizations. And uh, IM2 call is the most uh, popular implementation because uh, it can use, so, uh, it can use a brass, so uh, optimized uh, mass kernel libraries. Uh, but in case of uh, this kind of mobile GPU, the memory bandwidth is very uh, limited. And uh, because I'm, I'm to call it, uh, requires uh, nine times more memory utilization. So uh, uh, in case of Pi, Raspberry Pi, we use a dialect, dialect algorithms. It's, it's very rarely used, but uh, this is the best uh, algorithm for Raspberry Pi. And the tensor layout. Uh, so uh, most deep learning frameworks use this uh, CHW layout or H, uh, HWC layout, uh, but uh, we selected HCW layout. So channel middle layout. It's very rare. So I want to explain why, <laughs> but uh, so no time uh, to explain about that. So uh, channel middle layout. Uh, we, we did a uh, lots of benchmark, take lots of benchmark, and uh, we found a channel middle layout is the most efficient in case of our video quad GPUs. It's unique. And the, and the classic loop of uh, too, because uh, the video quad GPU has no dynamic uh, mechanism uh, for doing register allocation and the instruction scheduling to, to uh, reduce uh, uh, the latency, uh, memory load and store latency. So uh, uh, doing a classic loop optimization by hand and by compiler is very important. So we, our compiler do unloading, interchanging, software pipelining, and so on, considering these uh, topics. And layer mask, it, it's very popular optimization. So merging two layers, to one. And writing a uh, handy tuned uh, specialized conversion kernels uh, with assemblers. So uh, we wrote, uh, for example, uh, more than 20 uh, version, 20 implementations for just sub three by three conversion. And, uh, and there's lots of variations of so one by one conversion, one by X conversion, X by one conversion, X by X conversion. So lots of variations, more than hundreds uh, implementations for the, its math kernels. And the layer level scheduling. So uh, because uh, the memory bandwidth is very limited. So uh, we analyze the entire computation graph and, uh, and simulate uh, the memory utilization, memory consumption, and, uh, and the latency of each layer, and uh, solve uh, the computational layer pro optimization problem using, using the solver. Uh, using, this, using this kind of uh, technique, uh, we can we did reduce, we can reduce uh, more than 30% of the memory uh, uh, utilization consumption. And uh, actually, this is very tricky part. Uh, so uh, removing IO control overhead because uh, you saw, uh, as I said, uh, Raspberry Pi is for, in case of Raspberry Pi zero, uh, GPU is uh, fourteen. Uh, sorry, fourteen times faster than CPU. So as a result of, of, of uh, optimizing a GPU, now a CPU uh, became bottleneck. So uh, calling IO control uh, is too big in case of Pi zero. 
So, so we, we moved entire control flow management uh, from CPU to uh, GPU. So usually uh, this kind of uh, compiler uh, generated, generated uh, code, the host CPU calls uh, each layers one by one, but uh, it, it's too slow in case of a Pi zero. So we moved entire control flow to GPU, but, but uh, the, the video card GPU is not designed, designed uh, to do such kind of things. So uh, it's a bit tricky. <laughs> so uh, we did uh, we did every simulation ahead of time, every simulation of com uh, control flow and the memory allocations beforehand, and uh, and the resolve uh, the, the every resource utilization uh, uh, statically, and uh, generated uh, and achieved this kind of uh, continuation. Uh, and uh, I've skipped this part. So uh, uh, we, uh, I provide, we provide ActorCAS, which is, and, uh, and you can uh, access our SDK for free. So free join, join our partner program. And, and this is practical applications. Actually, uh, our main customer is a Japanese big convenience store chain. So uh, they are using our uh, Raspberry Pi uh, software to uh, analyze uh, customer attribute analysis or the audience analysis for digital signage. And, and the facial identification. Everything is running locally on that way pi. Yeah, so here is the name. It's a name of person. So, uh, so, so what, what is that? So, uh, so uh, we, uh, uh, Idei is doing R1D and uh, providing uh, SDK and uh, cloud service uh, for Raspberry Pi because Raspberry Pi is very popular and low price and versatile and uh, has a large ecosystem. So, uh, and we showed uh, that Raspberry Pi has enough computing resources uh, to run uh, various deep learning inference at a practical speed uh, to uh, achieve, uh, to do this, uh, we did a lot of uh, uh, R1D on the compiler uh, things. And uh, uh, the most important uh, optimization is uh, maximizing memory utilization uh, because uh, the memory bandwidth uh, for low end mobile GPUs is very limited. And now uh, we, we started from uh, Raspberry Pi and now we are expanding to other mobile uh, GPUs uh, like Mari uh, and uh, Arduino and so on. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, is there any time, minutes? Uh, yeah, we do have a couple of questions from the audience. Maybe it's time to get them addressed. So first question, is your power mm -hmm. consumption roughly two volts? Do you think two volt is low power enough for edge ML? In case of uh, Raspberry Pi, it's, it's enough because uh, it's, it's uh, the AC powered, sorry. In case of uh, our use cases, it's enough. Okay. Another question along with this is what's the percentage of your CPU cores uh, being used? Uh, almost 0%. 0%. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just single IO control core. Okay, thank you. That's impressive. Uh, another question. Have you compared your face detector with Xilinx solution? Uh, they can do 24 FPS on a single CPU core on a Raspberry Pi. Um, this, I think this is model 3B plus and beyond. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I didn't uh, know that company. Thank you very much. I will do that. Thank you. Yeah, if you have more questions for Eden, please raise them now. Uh, otherwise, we can move on to our next lucky draw. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Kyo Chin Song, uh, for your great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. We would love to thank uh, our sponsor again to make this event possible and free of charge. So ARM, uh, who provides the software and uh, hardware solutions 
for tiny amount development. Uh, we rolled out M55 and uh, U55 micro NPU early this year. And a couple of weeks ago, we rolled out the second generation of micro NPU U65. So if you want to learn more, you should be able to find information in our VIP package. Edge Cortex. Uh, Edge Cortex uh, provides dynamic neural accelerator architecture and co-exploration engine that brings cloud level performance to the edge. Synsense builds ultra low power sensing and inference hardware for embedded mobile and edge devices. And thank you, our partner organization, Shan, as our conference partner and our media partners listed on this page. You will find them on our tinymouth.org website. So again, thank you for joining us today. This concludes our last day of Tiny Mouth Asia 2020. We hope you learned something new in this week and we hope to see you next year. So please visit tinymail.org for more information. The slide deck and the videos will be posted shortly.